Hey guys, Zach Hitzman here. I'm going to show you how to create this composite inside of Adobe Photoshop. If you want to follow along, all the pictures I use are in a link in the description. First thing you want to do is have all your images loaded up into Photoshop. We have the road, my Mustang, and we have this little snow image we're going to use later. Command zero will bring you back to the full screen of the canvas. And the first thing you want to do whenever compositing an image is make sure the two images are using work well together. What do I mean by this? We'll take a look at the light in this first image of the road here. It's overcast, snowing, the light is very soft, so, so there's not going to be any harsh shadows produced by the sunlight, right? And then take a look in the Mustang photo I took. It was a rainy day, once again overcast skies, the light is very soft, and look at the shadow down here, it's not a very sharp shadow. So these two images will work very well together. Also, because it was raining in this one, the little water droplets on the car will, will work very well with the snow in this image. And also, the asphalt in most images looks pretty wet and has that saturated look to it. Okay, so the road is looking pretty good, but there's one thing I would like to clean up, and that's this little yellow line right down here. So in order to do this, I'm going to grab the pen tool, and then I'm going to make a selection right around it. There's a little yellow thing right there I want to grab. Come down here, and then right-click, make selection, okay. Hit Shift-Delete and Content-Aware again. And there you go, that looks pretty good, but there's this little area right here that's in focus for some reason. There's a couple of ways we can do this. First, I'm gonna grab the lasso tool, come around it like that, hit shift delete, and okay, on content aware. Mm, it looks about the same. Let's go back and hit command D. So let's do this manually. Let's go ahead and grab the clone stamp tool, hold option, the define a source area, and then go ahead and just kind of paint over it. I like to keep the flow at around 15, 25%, even 10%. It just kind of helps it blend a little more naturally with the transition. Let's try that. Maybe fix it up a little bit down here and through here. And I think that looks pretty good right there. So now we have the road cleaned up. Let's go ahead over to the Mustang layer. Now at this point, I'm going to recommend making a backup layer. Select your Mustang layer and hit Command J. Let's drag that below the road and just call it backup because we will need that later, actually. So now back again on the Mustang layer, we're going to make a selection of the entire Mustang, which this is by far the most tedious part of the process. Go ahead and grab your pen tool and now find an area to start. I like finding a harsh edge, that way you can have a clear idea of what you're selecting. And just go ahead and start making points. A couple tips when using the pen tool. If you make a point and then you want to smooth out the line in between, go ahead and add a point in between two of the points. Hold command and you can actually drag that to move it around. And then if you hold command and drag these little lines around, you can also move these to help make the selection more smooth and precise. And then if you have weird points like this, you can actually delete these and it will create a much smoother transition in between the two. And once again, you can add a point in between and drag that to how you see fit. Drag existing lines as well, existing points. Now we're just gonna come across the bottom of the bumper here. And this is looking pretty well. The selection doesn't have to be super precise and I'm gonna recommend keeping along the side of the car where the edge of the car meets the background. That's gonna give you your best selection. And also be sure to take your time on the selection. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but of course the longer you spend on making the selection, the better it's gonna end up looking. Let's go ahead and make that selection and get on with the next bit of this composite. 2,000 years later. All right, once you have your selection made, go ahead and make sure everything's the way you want around it. I'm liking the way this selection looks. And you're going to right click and hit make selection. Keep the feather radius to zero. We'll worry about that later and click OK. Now come down here to the mask button, click on it, and you'll have a mask of your car created. Of course, this looks funny, but there's a couple things. Well, there's a lot of things we're going to do to make this look much better and blend in with the image. If you zoom in on the edges, you'll notice how sharp this is. You do want to keep the edges pretty sharp, but you also want to have a little bit of a feather around it to help it blend in with the background better. Click on the layer mask and come up to the properties tab and see where it says feather. If you slide this over, it will soften that edge there and start to bring back parts of the image, but we don't want too much of the image back, actually. In my experience, I found that around two works. I probably want to go too far past five, so we're actually going to leave it at right around two. Two exactly. So now we have our selection made. 
Command Zero brings you back out to the entire image. Let's kind of get an idea of where we want to place this in the picture. The perspective is pretty good because both are head-on shots taken from a low angle, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. Of course, up here would be too high, down here is too low. I think right about here looks pretty good. You can always change it later, of course, but let's just keep this as a starting point. Let's start to blend the car much better with the background. First thing I want to do is grab this backup layer. If you hold Option and drag it to below it, it will copy it and keep the one from below. Now hold Command and drag this layer up until it snaps into place with the one behind it. And now what we're going to do here is double click on the right side of the layer, come into the layer style. If you go down the blend if this layer, you drag this down from the right side and it slowly starts to take away all the bright pixels in the image until you're left with nothing but the darks. But the reason we're doing this is to create the shadow below the car, but I noticed a problem. So let's go back here and fix something real quick. So come into this layer and see this white line right here. That's going to create a little bit of an inconsistency in the shadow. So let's grab our pen tool, make a quick selection around this. That looks good. Make selection. Okay. Hit shift delete. Content aware. Okay. Once again, and there you have it. Command D to deselect that selection. And then now once again, let's go into the layer style and drag down all those bright pixels. So right here is starting to look pretty good. And then if you hold option, tap on that, you'll break it in half. So now you can essentially create a much smoother transition between the pixels that are there and not. I think right around here looks pretty good. Click OK. And now let's turn off the road in the Mustang selection. Actually, let's keep on the Mustang selection. You notice that there's still some trees in the background and some of this still isn't super, doesn't have a super soft transition. So let's make a mask on this backup copy layer, which we'll rename the shadow in a second. And now what you're wanting to gonna do is click D to reset your swatches and if you press X, you can toggle to black. And of course, black paints away. So go ahead and paint away those trees in the background. Looks like I grabbed a little bit down there. So I'm gonna press X white paints back, of course. I'm actually going to decrease the size of this brush a little bit. Make sure I have all these shadows here still. That looks pretty good. I'm going to paint away a little bit of this unwantedness on the side. I'm actually going to make my brush a little bit sharper so I can get more of a precise selection right there. That looks pretty good. The side looks good as well. And now down here, let's go ahead and decrease that hardness again and kind of paint away right down here just a little bit. So we still have a shadow, but it's much smoother. All right, there we go. Let's turn back on the road and you can already see that that shadow starts to help the image blend with the picture so much better. And I'm actually going to select both of these layers and then I'm going to kind of replace this just a little bit. I think right there it looks pretty good. So now we have the shadow of the car and the car itself in the image, but the brightness and the colors don't quite match. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to group these two layers as Mustang because we want all these adjustment layers to affect both of those layers there, the shadow and the Mustang itself. And then let's add all the adjustment layers we are going to use. We are going to use brightness, curves, and a gradient map on the Mustang. Add a hue and saturation layer on top of the entire image. Now, if you hold Option, you see this little arrow here appear, and you can use this to make it so that these layers only apply to the Mustang. Turn off the gradient map for now, especially if it's affecting the image. And if you come up to this hue saturation layer we added, right now it's affecting the entire image. Go ahead and decrease that saturation all the way. So now all you see are the bright and dark pixels. This will help you match the light the best. So coming down here to the brightness and contrast. One thing I like to do is kind of slide to the extremes to see where it obviously doesn't match, like right here and all the way down here. Neither of those match quite well. So let's kind of slide it around and see what starts to match well. I think right there is looking pretty good. Same thing with the contrast. I think right about there is starting to look pretty good. You can go ahead and see the before and after. It's already starting to look so much better. Now let's go up the curves. Go ahead and start playing around with this. Kind of drag down the dark pixels, make them darker. I just do this typical S curve right there. And then you can go ahead and turn this layer on and off to see if it's making it look better. And I think it definitely adds a little bit to the image. So let's go ahead and turn off this hue and saturation and take another look at this. Now the next thing we're going to do is kind of change the color to help it match. So let's go ahead and turn on that gradient map, come into it, and then 
In order to match the car with the background, we're actually gonna steal the colors from the background. Let me show you how. So come down here to the road, press B to grab your brush. If you hold option, you can get this little eyedropper tool. So first let's select one of the brightest areas and that looks about to be this guy up here. And now let's come back up to the gradient map, come into the gradient map. If you just tap right over here, it'll drop that color in. So let's delete that existing white. Now click on that color you just dropped in there, open the color and notice the brightness of the color right here. It's at 98. So let's go ahead and match that 98 to the actual location. Click OK once you're happy with that. Now let's go back to the road and let's add a dark color. Use your eyedropper tool by holding option and pick one of the darker colors from down here. Now there are darks down here, but those are going to give you a little bit more of a green tint to it. So let's go ahead and pick a darker color from down here since the car itself is gray. Once you have your color, come back up to the gradient map, drop it in on the left side, go ahead and delete that old color, click into the color you just dropped in there. The brightness is four. So go ahead and change the location to four. Now we probably don't need a mid-tone, but I'm just gonna select one just in case to be thorough. Press B once again to grab your brush and pick a color that looks like it would be a pretty average kind of gray color. Right there looks pretty good. Come back up to the gradient map. Once again, drop that color right in the middle. Take note of the brightness, it's at 45. So we're gonna change that to 45. Now let's look at the before and after. It's starting to blend so much better with the image. The shadow of the Mustang does look pretty good, but I think we can make it look much better. So let's go ahead into our Mustang group. Add a brightness adjustment layer right above it. And now make sure it's only affecting that shadow layer. And now notice how on the road here that there's a clear difference in the light. Go ahead and increase the brightness until it starts to match that light right there. I think that looks pretty good right there. Let's see the before and after. You know, I am pretty happy with the way that works, but if you come over here to the layer mask, you can actually paint away some of that brightness near the back of the car where it'd be much darker because of the shadow below it. I think I painted a little too much right there, so let's get that. And I think that's looking pretty good. We do have this snow layer here, so let's go ahead and use it. So the first thing you want to do that you can do is convert to a smart object. This will help to keep the resolution as you increase it in size. You hold shift as you rotate, it will snap to every 15 degrees. Now hold option and you can increase it from the middle, increase it until it matches the screen size. And then now you have snow, but you only want the white bits. So you don't want to have this entire black background. So go ahead and come up to the blend modes, scroll down to screen. You could use lighten and you know what? I'm actually thinking lighten does look a little bit better. And right now it's kind of all in your face. So let's do a couple of things to decrease that. First thing I want to do is select this layer, come up the filter, blur, motion blur. This will help to create the illusion that the snow is actually falling. I think right around 43 looks good. You can select the preview button to see what it looks like before and after, and I'm happy with that. Now it's still a little too in your face, so let's lower the opacity just a little bit. You want it to be one of those effects where you may not notice it right away, but once you notice it, you think it looks pretty cool. That's looking great. It's just subtle enough that you still can see it, but it's not too in your face. One thing you can do to any composite that really help blend the two images together is to add an overall effect to the entire image. So let's go to the very top here. Let's add a curves adjustment layer. And also let's do a color lookup. Let's come in here into the curves and increase those brights just a little bit. Decrease the darks just a little bit. Give it that typical S curve. That's looking pretty good. And now the color lookup. If you come up here to the 3D LUT file, there's all sorts of ones you can do. I feel like drop blues look pretty good. It takes away a little bit of the contrast, but also helps make the image look much better. The image is now complete, but there actually is one thing I would like to clean up a little bit, and that's uh, this little mishap right here. You can blame that on the raccoon that ran out in front of me. So <laughs> let's go ahead and go down to the Mustang layer, and we're gonna use some content aware and clone stamping to fix this real quick. So come around the edge just like this, around that corner, and then if you let go, It'll snap right back up to the top. Shift delete, content aware, okay. Command D, and that looks pretty good. Command zero will bring you out to the full canvas and let's zoom in and take a look at our work. You can see what it looks like without the Mustang in the image and with the Mustang in the image. And there you have it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, feel free to leave them in the comments below or send me a message over on Instagram. Hope you all enjoyed the video and hopefully learned something new. Until next time, peace.